Hi everyone and thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be learning about the basic states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. So let's get started. In this simulation, I'm able to show you different substances and what they look like in the solid state, the liquid state, and the gaseous state. We can look at neon, argon, oxygen, and water. So I'm going to pick a few of these and show you the differences between them. I'm also going to change the temperature to Celsius. It's currently in Kelvin, and you might be a little bit more familiar with Celsius temperatures. So right now we're looking at neon, and it's in the solid state. Something I'd like you to see is that the particles are really tightly packed together. You might say that they are rigid, that the particles are locked into place. I think it's important that you also notice that there's very little space in between the atoms that make up neon. That means if we tried to apply pressure to it, it would be very, very hard to compress the solid. Now let's talk about the particle motion. You notice that the neon atoms are vibrating. There is movement in a solid. It also is possible that the particles might be spinning in place. What they can't do is they can't slide past one another. Because of that, the shape of a solid does not change. It also means the volume that those particles take up is constant. What I'm going to do now is increase the temperature a little bit. I'm going to add some thermal energy, also known as heat. Let's just add a little bit of heat and notice what's happening. Notice how they now have a little bit more kinetic energy, more energy of motion. And we see that that vibration gets a little bit more violent. Let's keep going. Let's see if we can get it to be a liquid. There we go. Let's look at this here. Do you notice the differences right away? This is liquid neon. One of the things that I see is that the particles are still really close to one another. In fact, most of them are still touching. What they now lack is that regular arrangement that we had before or that pattern that we saw before that was so rigid. There's still very little space in between the particles, which means that liquids are also very hard to compress. Now let's talk about the motion. The liquid particles flow very easily past one another. They can slide past one another. Because of this, they will easily take the shape of the container. We're gonna give it one more degree just to see if we can get a little tiny bit more movement. Wow, look at that. Now it's really, really spreading out and taking the shape of the container. Now let's switch over to the gaseous phase. If I click on gas, those neon atoms quickly spread out. You see the, the big difference between the liquid and the gaseous phase? Talking about the arrangement of these particles, the biggest thing that I hope you notice is the particles are separated from one another and they're no longer touching. They're really far apart. They lack any regular arrangement that we might have seen from that solid state. In fact, they're moving constantly. They're constantly in motion. In terms of that movement, let's think about it. They're moving all over the place. It's random. They move past one another. They might collide with one another at high speeds. They hit the sides of the container. The biggest difference between a gas and a liquid and solid is that gases are compressible. I hope you see the difference and why that happens. There's so much space in between the particles. If we apply a little bit of pressure, it would be easy to push them closer together. We did not see that in either the liquid phase or the solid phase. At this point, I'd like to switch it over to a different substance. How about we try an element that I think you're very familiar with? That's oxygen. Oxygen makes up almost 20% of the air that we breathe. What makes oxygen so different from neon is that oxygen is a diatomic element and neon is a monatomic element. Before I switch over to oxygen, take a close look at neon. Notice that this element has 
atoms, they're identical to each other. That's what defines it as an element, but also that they're singular atoms. Now, switching over to oxygen, note the difference. Still in the solid state, we still see that wiggling and vibrating that we saw before with neon, but the particles are now molecules. They're not singular atoms. We have two atoms of oxygen and they're attached to each other by a covalent bond. This is quite different than neon and it's quite different from most of the elements on the periodic table. In fact, there's only seven elements on the periodic table that are diatomic like oxygen. I like to use the acronym Honkelbrief, which stands for hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine. All of these elements are made of molecules rather than singular atoms. You might not have realized that oxygen could even be a solid, but when the temperature is really, really super cold, you can get oxygen to exist in the solid state. How about as a liquid? Let's click on liquid and see what happens and note the differences. All right, well, now we see a little bit more of that flow that the particles can move past one another. They're not locked into that rigid pattern that we saw before. Still very close to one another though. We just see a little bit more movement. How about the gaseous phase? When oxygen is a gas, this is what it's like in the air that we breathe. The biggest thing that I'm sure you're going to notice is, wow, look how far apart they are from each other. They're now in constant random motion. Look at them rotating and moving and just hitting each other in the sides of the container all the time. I'm going to take that back to the solid state. And again, there's that nice rigid structure with the vibration. Water is a compound, so it's going to look a little different than an element to you. I think you realize that water is H2O, and so it's got two hydrogens and one oxygen in every single particle that we look at. Let's click on it and see what happens. Whoa, that's pretty funny looking, right? Look at those molecules and they're wiggling all over the place. You might see that they're actually a little bit farther away from each other than the neon and the oxygen. Water is sort of strange. Water is a bent molecule. It's also what we call a polar molecule, meaning the molecules are kind of sticky. The hydrogens on one molecule attract the oxygens on a different molecule and vice versa. Because of that feature, they make this arrangement that actually looks like it sort of has pockets or holes in it. These particles take up a lot of space. In a moment, I'm going to click on liquid water and the biggest thing I want you to see that changes is how the volume changes. We're gonna have the same number of particles, meaning we're going to have the same mass, but the volume is going to be dramatically smaller. Take a look. Whoa, see the difference there? Same number of particles taking up less space. Now this causes something very interesting. It causes liquid water to have a larger density than solid water. Density is mathematically determined by taking the mass of the particles divided by the volume that they take up. So in solid water, meaning ice, that ratio is a lot smaller than it is in the liquid phase. In fact, the density of ice is roughly about 0.93 grams for every milliliter that you have, and liquid water is larger than that. It's 1.00 grams for every milliliter that you have. In other words, liquid water has more mass per milliliter than solid water, and that's pretty cool. Let's take the water to one more phase, and that is the gaseous state. Take a look at this. Woo, those particles are all over the place. They immediately got so spread out, and that's what's typical about the gaseous state. So this would be like steam. There's some people out there that have a misconception about what happens when liquid water becomes a gas. Some people think 
that the hydrogens and the oxygen, they actually separate. Well, that would be a chemical reaction. We're actually not making anything new here. We're just going through a phase change, meaning we had liquid water before, and now we have gaseous water. Same substance, that's a physical change. The particles look the same, whether they're in the gas state, the liquid state, or the solid state. It's just that they either move closer together or move farther apart. I hope that you enjoyed learning about solids and liquids and gases today. Please join us again for our next chemistry tutorial. Have a great day.